Computers don't make a lot of interesting sounds like airplanes or fire trucks. What they do make is the sound of the fan, and the fans are in there to cool the machine down and keep it from burning up. We've improved the speed of computers since the transistor was invented by about a factor of 100 trillion. Even as late as 1950, the fastest computer in the world was about 5,000 operations a second. This computer is capable of performing one and a half quadrillion operations a second. That's one with 15 zeros after it. These rows and rows of cabinets containing the processors are all connected together by something that we call the system interconnect. You can think of this switchboard as neurons to connect the brain together and allow it to form a single organism. In this room, this is where we store the data. We store this on literally thousands of disk drives, and the total volume is about 11 petabytes, or 11 million gigabytes. This is about a thousand times the total print holdings of the Library of Congress. That's a really amazing thing to think about, that a thousand Library of Congresses could fit in this room. Now I'm gonna show you something that most people never get to see, and that's the inside of a supercomputer. What we're gonna do is pull out one of the computing nodes and take a look. You'll notice so almost immediately there are these two large copper heat sinks. They're sitting on top of the processors and their purpose is to draw heat away from the processors while they're doing their calculations and keep them from overheating. There are two Intel chips on this board, and each Intel chip has eight processors. So this compute node has 16 processors on it. Just on this node, there are billions of transistors. It's more than there are bricks in the Great Wall of China. Want to know where computer chips come from? They come from sand. Silicon is extracted from sand and purified, melted, and formed into cylindrical ingots weighing about 200 pounds. They slice this ingot into thin wafers about the thickness of a penny, and then they polish them to a high degree of smoothness. You know, this is all done by robots. Then we put the nano circuits onto the surface using a technique similar to photography called photolithography. That process of imprinting patterns and reacting the surface chemically is repeated about 50 times to form three-dimensional structures and the complex structures of the transistors themselves so that they will work electronically. Electroplating creates the circuits that connect these transistors together. The resulting chip looks like some futuristic city with multi-level highways, which are the wires, connecting the transistors together to form logic circuits. We also have these very thin wafer-like memory cards, and you'll see there are about eight of those running across here. Each one has four gigabytes of storage on it, so four billion bytes of storage. A total on the node here will be 32 billion bytes of memory. And then up here you will see there's this little card, and this card is the communication interface card that allows it to talk to the high-speed network with its 4,500 peers. This is where the electrical power is brought in in condition before being distributed across what we call the motherboard. This system altogether is one of the most complex machines ever built by human beings, much more complicated than the space shuttle. So it represents a pinnacle of engineering accomplishment by human beings.